So our first presentation will be by Jeremy Balenson, uh, who has done a tremendous amount of work on understanding how people interact with virtual people, with avatars and so on. Matter of fact, we actually couldn't get Jeremy to come today. <laughs> so this is, this is virtual Jeremy. Uh, being guided by some computer somewhere else, right? <laughs> Jeremy. <clears throat> Good morning. So I'm going to talk today about these things called avatars. Avatars that uh, our kids are using for hours a day, that business people are using to communicate. And uh, I'm going to talk to you as a one part engineer and three part social scientist. And what we do is we have a lab where we build virtual reality. We put people in avatars uh, and we study their behavior when they wear them. Uh, and uh, we're finding a lot of uh, really fascinating things. So What are these avatars? So they range in how realistic they are. Sometimes they look very cartoonish. Sometimes they can be photographic. Sometimes they can be, uh, look like a different species. Uh, these are these digital representations people wear in video games, in video conferences. They're a digital wrapper that people control when they're communicating, when they're playing games, uh, when they're working. And here you have screenshots from some of the more popular games. Farmville, over 100 million users. Uh, Second Life, uh, million users this week. World of Warcraft uh, has uh, over 10 million adults in the United States playing for about 20 hours per week. Their average age is 29, and they run around in these uh, elven uh, warrior type warlock things. So you have a lot of adults wearing these crazy bodies. Um, in our lab, what we do is we look at not only things you find on the web, but we build avatars that are high in what we call immersion, meaning they look just like you and they behave just like you. So uh, please start this video. Uh, what you see here is a web camera on top of a computer, and the gentleman is moving his head. Uh, what you see on the left is his avatar. The right is the real-time video. The right is a 3D digital model that is moving as we track, using computer vision, all of his face movements. So he sits in front of a camera. His partner in a conversation sees that avatar moving just with him. So um, you guys uh, are probably all going to get lots of requests from your children and grandchildren on Christmas to buy me the Microsoft Connect. Uh, this is a product that uses computer vision very much like this to put avatars that look and behave realistically like uh, your children on your TVs in your living rooms in their bedrooms. So uh, avatars can look like warlocks or they can look just like uh, you and behave just like you. Uh, who uses them? Uh, here's a laundry list of some stats on it. I want to focus on this bottom bullet point. Uh, a study that came out this year by Stanford professor Don Roberts, working for the Kaiser Family Foundation, uh, he looked at over 2,000 children from across the country. It turns out that children between the ages of 8 and 18 are wearing avatars for over two hours per day. National random sample, extremely validated study. Uh, to give you a sense of this, if you combine the amount of time they spend with print media with the amount of time they spend watching movies, that's only one hour. Okay? So kids are spending twice as much time in avatars as they are reading or watching movies. So you've got these creatures, these digital creatures people are wearing for up to 20 hours a week, uh, and they're doing it more than any other behavior. Uh, and the big question that we ask in the lab are, <laughs> What are the consequences for me wandering around the world for 20 hours a week, 30 hours a week, even 40 hours a week in an avatar that is fundamentally different than my physical representation? So in a world where I can be beautiful, where I can be the other gender, where I can be a, a, a puppy, uh, when I can change my species, my height, uh, in a world where there's no constraints on how I look or behave, what are the consequences to me? What are the consequences to the people that I'm uh, interacting with? And as a lab, what we do is we run experiments to answer these questions. So uh, I'm going to show you a video, which is how we typically run an experiment in my lab. This is an immersive virtual reality simulation. In the bottom window there, there's somebody wearing these fancy engineering apparatus that uh, we build. And what you're seeing is uh, the vision that he gets in stereo as he wanders around the virtual world. Uh, please start the video. 
So uh, this gentleman is in my lab and he's walking around. As he walks, we're tracking all of his physical movements and we're updating the world to reflect what he sees and what he hears. Uh, you really feel like you're in this room. And so uh, this gentleman, he walks up to the virtual mirror and uh, he sees himself in the mirror. Uh, it looks just uh, like him. He's a white male. Uh, it gestures with him as he turns his head. Uh, it turns his head. It really feels like him. But then he bends down, uh, and he is a white male in the physical world, but we've now changed him to a woman of color. And the big question we ask is, when your virtual identity is separate from your physical identity, and you then go out into the digital world and interact with other people, how do you behave? Do you behave in line with your physical self, or do you then behave in line with your virtual self? Meaning, how much do these avatars change who we are? So we've run about 30 or 40 experiments that, uh, that uh, look at this. And the typical experiment, we put someone in an avatar. Uh, we take in hundreds of subjects, and one at a time, we put them in a different avatar. And we just measure uh, what they say, how they gesture, uh, their behavior inside and outside of the lab. So the first study we looked at was attractiveness. Uh, in the physical world, it turns out that better-looking people are friendlier, more extroverted, uh, despite the fact we'd love to think we're these deep creatures as humans, it turns out how we we look does change our behavior. Uh, in the virtual world, beauty is free. Uh, you have to go really far out of your way to find an unattractive avatar. So the question, <laughs> the question we wanted to ask is, well, if I wear a good-looking avatar, how does that change my behavior? And we simply put subjects in uh, a virtual world where they had a face that was a little bit more attractive or a little bit less attractive than their face. Uh, and none of the subjects realized that we'd done this change. It was all done on a subconscious level. Afterward, none of the subjects consciously realized we'd put them in the good-looking avatar. We then just had them walk around with other people. And when you have a good-looking avatar, you will take three steps closer to a person than when you have an unattractive one, meaning you're more adventurous and getting in their personal space. You'll look them in the eye more, and when we record your speech, you'll actually speak more confidently, and you will be more personable. So uh, even though you don't realize that you're acting differently, you just behave like a more uh, confident person. Uh, when I then take you out of virtual reality and I put you in a room where you get to date people, uh, the odds of you approaching better-looking people in the physical world, when you're filling out online dating forms and in other venues, increases if an hour earlier you've worn an attractive avatar. So these avatars not only change who we are in the virtual world, but it literally makes me a more confident person when I leave. Height. Uh, sadly, in the physical world, uh, in the United States, height is correlated with income. Uh, the taller you are, the more money you make. Uh, a fascinating study just came out of MIT that looked at online dating with about 120,000 data points. For every inch under 5'10", a male is, uh, in order to get the same number of hits as the, the other guy, he's got to make an extra $30,000. Okay? <laughs> so uh, you can quantify uh, the impact of height. But uh, in the virtual world, again, height is free. So we ran a simple study where we made somebody 10 centimeters taller than their partner or 10 centimeters shorter than their partner in avatars, and we had them do a classic money negotiation task. And it turns out that when you've got an avatar that's only 10 centimeters shorter than the other guy, you don't consciously realize there's a height differential, but you are three times as likely to lose that uh, negotiation in the virtual world. This happens regardless of your physical height. When I then take you out of the virtual world in a separate uh, experiment, uh, and you were 10 centimeters taller than this guy, I put you in seats that guarantee that your chairs are at the exact same height, you still lose a negotiation. So this social hierarchy that was formed by height of avatar carries over to your relationship in the physical world. Health, uh, please start this video. So here, uh, somebody is running in the physical world, you see him in that panel. As he runs in the physical world, every four times his knees cross his waist, his avatar loses a pound. Okay? And so what we do is we show people the real-time cause and effect of physical behavior on uh, potential health, meaning in a half hour of running, this guy sees his avatar thin down. It's got his face. It looks just like him. He actually gets thinner by a function of exercise. And what we then do is measure the amount that people will exercise over the next week. Uh, we'll make them exercise in the physical lab. When I give you this simulation and you see yourself losing weight as a function of physical avatar exercise, uh, you'll exercise more. Okay? So, uh, real, look, we all know we're supposed to exercise. We can, you can tell someone to do it. It doesn't work. Show them their avatar getting fat because they're standing still. Uh, you'll see exercise in the lab. <laughs> 
We've also done this with eating behavior.、Uh, so in this study, we had subjects. We're f- we took over their arms, so we're tracking their arm movement and forced them to eat Reese's pieces one after the other. <laughs> and literally, they had to look down and see themselves swell.、Uh, we then、uh, put them in a room and give them an opportunity to eat and look at the foods they eat. And you can see where this is going. You eat healthier food as a consequence of actually seeing the cause and effect of healthy and unhealthy eating.、Um, Retirement savings. So, if I build the avatar of a subject in my lab, this is Hal at age 30, the top left corner. I can use algorithms to age him、uh, by creating this connection to your future self.、Uh, we can actually make people defer gratification now. That is, turn down money now that they'll then put in their savings retirement. So,、uh, as a way to get kids to save more money, we've been very effective in aging their avatars. So,、uh, I'm running out of time. Let me just conclude、uh, that if you're worried about this or excited about this, we've got a book that's coming out. You can pre-order it now. It's called Infinite Reality, and it's about how avatars are really going to change the world. <laughs>